Hey, welcome back. Or if you're if you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, we've got a uh, Hamilton Beach Model G to restore this time. This one's going to be completely restored in white with a black turntable. Um, this one right here is a it is an heirloom. Uh, the lady that sent this said this is a grandma's, and and she's got a lot of sentimental attachment to it, of course. So I um, hope we can do her proud with restoration on this one. Um, we're going to go ahead and plug it in to see if it works here. Uh, one thing I noticed on the cord is part of the cord is missing. This wasn't the original cord to this anyways, uh, but it's going to be getting a whole new cord on it. So let's go plug it in and see what happens. And as you tell, it still runs good. So that's a real good sign for this. So, um, I'm guessing it's just a, you know, just a general cleanup on everything inside. Um, the parts seem to be good. We'll check the brushes and replace those if they need to be replaced. Uh, mainly, I guess this is going to be a cosmetic transformation, um, making this look like new again. So let's go and uh, get started taking this apart and see what we've got here. As you see, the brushes are worn down pretty good. Brush cap on this side is missing. Um, the plastic part of it is white. Alright, this brush is a little bit longer. Um, the spring even looks different, so it's almost like somebody had replaced one brush at one time on here, which is kind of unusual. today. Um, looking at the handle, the handle is in really good shape. A lot of times you'll find these are broken off in the back here. Uh, this one just needs to be cleaned up. The beaters need a little polishing on them. Um, they don't look bent or anything. They just, you can see there's a little bit of uh, corrosion starting on them. So we can polish those up. Take a look at the gearbox. Overall on the outside, this mixer really isn't in bad shape at all. Um, you can see there's some paint missing here, probably where bowls hit and stuff, but uh, um, you know, overall um, it's got a little discoloration and, and some dirt on it, but it's in, it's in pretty good shape. Let me get this to pop off here. These have a uh, tiny little cork gasket on them, and uh, that little gasket tends to get hard and makes these things pop off uh, a little difficult sometimes. But if you just work it carefully, you can get them off. And we just discard that cork gasket because we can't find another one like it. Um, it'd be hard to try to find an O-ring that size. So we just discard these. Now right, you can see the grease inside the gearbox here. Um, yeah, I should probably pick this view up for you guys too. Let me zoom in a bit. Well, the grease looks pretty dark in here. Um, that right there is a chunk of grease. That seems pretty solid. Yeah, this grease has probably never been changed in here. Um, but regardless, even if it had, it's going to have to all come out anyways. But I'm willing to bet this is the original grease that was in these. That was in this mixer here. There's quite a bit of it too. I 
and it's all pretty chunky. Well, as you see, the shaft still rotate nice and freely. This one's got a little bit of drag on it, but not too bad at all. This one turns nice and easy, and that's probably because it had been oiled, I'm sure, at some point down through the juicer port. Alright, we get our chunks out of here. We'll try and get these um, set screws out of here. These don't have hex head set screws on them. These have actually got a little slotted screw set screw in them. There's a layer of grease on top of the gear. Just got to scrape that off till you see the screw because they pretty much set flush. Alright, there's that one. And the grease that's sitting on top of the gears is, I mean, it's crumbling off. It's, it's pretty dry and hard. And this is why I say, too, you know, when you, um, when you pick these up, like if you pick them up at you know flea market or wherever, you know you get a good good price on them. Yeah, that's that's great to get a good price on them. But you really should do some maintenance on them, uh, whether you send them in to somebody or you you do it yourself. Which hopefully you know these videos will help some of you out that want to do it yourself. Um, it's always a good idea to do some maintenance on it because as you've seen from previous videos, you know how bad some of the cords can get. They get to actually be where you know a safety hazard. And you know stuff like uh, shafts that that are uh, that have drag on them will cause heat on the motor and, and could cause damage to the machine, which nobody wants. So, all right, let's go ahead and see if we can get these screws out. I know I a view here. I'm just trying to find a slot in the screw. Alright, anyways, let's try a little wider screwdriver on here. There we go. Most times on these HBs, these little set screws, they come out pretty easily. Sometimes they can get stuck and they're good. I think we may have one of those right here. Man, it just takes a little, a little work and hopefully you can get it out without um, you know, breaking off one of the sides in the slot because I've done that before too. They've just been stuck in there so hard. And see this one, can, I can turn it back and forth but it doesn't want to back out. Alright, that's what we're probably gonna take heat to. Hopefully we can get it out without um without breaking that tip on that uh, on the screwdriver slot there. Because then we have to drill it. gears look like on these, they're all metal, like a brass gear. And I'm going to scoop out as much of the grease out of here as I can. I 
because it always makes a big mess under the heat gun. Yeah, it starts to melt and smoke and drip. And it's just a big mess. All right, there is our other washer. These gears also have a washer top and bottom. Usually they'll come out with the gear, but sometimes they'll stick in here to the to the housing. And they're identical on both sides, so um, it doesn't matter which side you you put them back in on. Yeah, that's got quite a bit of grease in it. I wonder if somebody may have added grease to this one at one point in time. Not any time recently. heat gun and we're going to work on that right away. Okay, the uh, bolt washers came out attached to the gear that time. Um, but now we've got a bunch of melted grease in here. Uh, handy, I can throw it into right now. Oh my god, I'm just going to dump it. I'll be right back. Okay, so we got rid of some of that melted grease that was in there. Um, that thing put up a bit of a fight. I, I thought maybe, you know. It's one another one of those situations where heat would fix it, but I think what happened is uh, that set screw was just ran down just a little too far, 
and it mushroomed the bottom enough to where it was just catching. So um, went through, we drilled it, and when we drilled it out, uh, we were able to, you know, because the hole was smaller than the um, than the diameter of that set screw, and we were able to then just engage our screwdriver down a little bit, and then it just backed right out at that point. Um, it didn't put up no fight at all. So we gotta go through, we gotta get the grease out of here, and um, then we'll just heat this up with the heat gun as well. And once this is heated up, this slides right off. And uh, when we put it back together, we basically do the same thing. We'll heat this up with the heat gun, and we'll just drop it on here, and it'll it'll go right down and instantly cool. And that's what holds it on there. Um, it's basically a nice press fit on there. Um, so, anyways, this part here is done for now. Until uh, we get into our degreasing, and now we're going to start taking a look under the front cover here. We're going to get this off and take a look at the internal parts. Oh, actually, I always forgot before I do that, uh, these HBs do have secondary brushes inside of them. So we're going to get those off now. You see, it looks like there's a lot going on inside here. Um, let me see if I can zoom in a bit for you. It looks like there's a lot going on inside these, but there's really not. This right here is, um, if I get this to come out. This right here is a capacitor for the speed control, which just helps to, you know, control arcing. Um, this right here is an RF filter. So if this comes out, we don't put this back in. And uh, one nice feature about the HPs is the they're, they're wire nutted. All your connections are wire nutted together here. So if you ever go to change a cord on yours, you see how easy it is. You take off your two wire nuts, and on this one, I don't see any type of uh, no UL knot or cord restraint holding this cord in. Um, usually, the cord just wraps up around here and this one may have been wrapped up around there to lock it in yeah I think it was because it's still got that shape but um, if you if you wrap your cord we bring you a cord and even the new round ones what we do is we bring them in wrap it around there and then when the cover goes on it'll keep that from coming out but that keeps you from being able to uh, it puts enough bends in it to where you can't pull your cord out the back and there now we got that cord out then go ahead and go into old cord pile. We'll get rid of this RF filter since this doesn't get reused. But the screw right here is where we hook our ground wire up to. So we don't want to lose that screw. But this can go. That's garbage now. Alright, these are the two connections to the um, to the fuel coil right here. So what, what we do when we hook it back up is uh, we'll just hook our, our um, black and our white from our power cord to these and our ground to there and it doesn't matter which side is what but down inside of here now can you see yeah right here we've got our secondary brushes and on these models here um, on the model G's 1950 to uh, I don't know whatever year they, they stopped making them um, this is where the secondary brushes are accessed. You got to take off this cover to get to them. On the older ones, um, model, you know, years 1948 and 49, I believe, uh, there was a small brush cap on the sides. Let me get these out here. Um, on the sides of the motor housing here, and you just take those out, and then you can get to your your secondary brushes. You know, these look good. There's plenty of length on those. All right, now we've got all that um, pulled out. We're going to go through and we're going to put our, our bottom cover back on with just one screw for now. Just so we can put it back on the stand because it's a lot easier to work with on the stand. Ooh, magnetic screwdriver wants to mess with me. Alright, put this 
on the stand and we'll get this taken apart. So I did manage to find a socket that fits it. Seems like everything on this mixer is super tight. I'm not sure who, who assembled this, but uh, I obviously ate the Wheaties that day. This little socket we're going to keep right here. So I'll come off and get degreased and uh, oops, let me zoom out here. Alright, this will all get degreased and cleaned up and this right here is a bushing in there and there's actually two oil wicks in there. Um, there's a coil spring that's wound up and uh, it fits underneath here and it keeps tension on everything. Um, we have to take that out to get everything out. That's a bit of a pain but we've taken them out before. I'll get that out in the oil wicks and that way we can clean everything up in here. Um, Re-oil these oil wicks and put it back together. And uh, this right here is a um, it's a cork uh, I don't know filler or whatever. It's the hole where you drip the oil into. Um, and this one looks in pretty bad shape. And a lot of times they are they're they're mashed or brittle. Uh, so we probably just take that out. And when you oil um, this. this Sorry. Right. Um, but when you when you oil these, you don't have to be as careful as you do with the sunbeams because um, you know the oil travels down here and uh, it will soak into these oil wicks that are in here. So that's another nice feature in these HPs. And this is the aha. Uh, uh -huh. Remember the other video? Um, I was looking for one of these and I said I could have sworn it was a felt washer in here. Well, this one has it, so I wasn't hallucinating. I'm glad I actually saw that. Um, but, but you can see this is right here is your, your speeds, so whatever lettered on here. And, um, you know, this is the part that, that makes contact with the uh, the contacts on the other, other piece that connects to the motor right here. So that'll get all, all cleaned up. Now this piece is connected by wires, so we can't take it all the way out. So we can just pull it down out of the way. This piece slides on the armature, and there's usually quite a bit of carbon buildup on these, as in this case with this one. Uh, it comes from secondary brushes. That was not as bad as most of them, though. Now we go ahead and we'll pull our armature out of here. And you see there's some, uh, there's a little bit of wear on the armature here. I mean, it's not too bad. Um, these never really seem to have wear on them. They just basically have to get cleaned up, you know, polished up. Um, this right here are your your contacts for your points. And once again, I'm not sure exactly how these work, but it has something to do with centrifugal force. Um, I, like I said, I'm not sure exactly how, but somehow centrifugal force opens these up. And controlling that is. I guess controlling the way they open up is how you control the speed on them. Not really sure. I may have to zoom you back in here. Alright, we have to take out our little mix guide window here. These you gotta be really careful because you could chip your 
Well, mix guide plastic. Basically, this thing is spring-loaded on there. Um, when it goes on, you see when you push these flat, these little teeth, there's one at either end. Um, they will dig into the plastic. Okay, so yeah, these things are, are kind of tricky. Um, you know, if you just try to, to pry, it, uh, pry it off on the end that, that you can see here, which looks like the easiest thing to do, these teeth end up chipping this mixed guide window. As you see, you know, this one's in really good shape. Um, a lot of times, you know, I'll get them and they'll already be chipped. Uh, I've even gotten where these have been missing. They've been laying down inside the, the mixer housing. Um, but let's take a look at this mix guide window. You can see there's no chips on the corners. So this is a really good one. And it'll clean up nice. The good one's back in there. Alrighty, I'll zoom back out here. Now it's time to break out the uh, uh, field coils. First thing we gotta do is get um, get these threaded rods out of here. And for that, the easiest way I've found to do that is to just double nut it with the nuts that came off. Take the two nuts up, grab the bottom one, and back it around. This thread of rod looks a bit thin. And there is a lock washer down here, so make sure that comes out with it. Yeah, it's got definite bend in it here. That will straighten it out. Oh, we to take our nuts back off. And we'll just do the same thing on the other side. This was tight. These thread rods are usually never this tight. Okay, Let's see this nut down here isn't turning, so we gotta crack this loose too. And of course, that's ultra tight. Damn. 
whoever they had assembling these that day really ate their Wheaties. Everything on here is just so incredibly tight. Those are really tight. All right, we're starting to get some movement now. Yeah, this, one, this one was really on there too. Wow. All right. Let's get that out. Alright, we're going to go ahead and take the badge off the side here. And these are held on with, with two small, uh, like really small uh, slotted screws. And the heads on them usually get packed with crap. So make sure that you get the crap out before you try and turn them. Or you can easily damage the heads of these screws. They're pretty fragile. on this one. Looks to be in really good shape. And there's always, you always get some kind of stuff underneath it where, where it traps um, whatever in there. <coughs> Alright, let's take our cover off the bottom again. two spacers in here that we got to get out now. Right there. And now, we should be able to get our field coil out of here. Um, they usually come right out with no effort, or very little effort. Of course, now that I say that, and then everything else was so tight in here. Yeah, that's going to want to be super tight as well. Back here, but it's still pretty tight. 
especially for HP. SIDs, you usually stick your hand in, grab it two fingers and pull it out. But not this one. I think. Yep. Alright. Let's take a look at the dual coil assembly on these. These are your leads that go to the contacts on the brush holders. It's a flower build up on there. Um, check your wiring on there. It looks nice and flexible. Same with these leads here. Uh, this right here is uh, like wound resistor wire has something to do with the speed as well. Those you just got to be careful with that you don't damage those. Um, a lot of times you can see taking it apart, I mean you see what's on my hands here, you'll get some, you know, a little bit of grease on those. Um, so the first time that you turn it on, when you run it on low for a while, you can get a little smoke out of it, but once it burns off, it's, uh, they're, they're fine after that. Um, but everything else on here looks really good. So um, we'll, we'll just clean this up, we'll clean all the parts off on here, uh, the capacitor and all of these. I've yet to find one of these failed. Um, so we should be good to go with that. Now, we've got uh, on this part here, we've got to take this nut and, and uh, a thrust screw out of the back, which, wow, that sucker is tight too. He had a little more Wheaties when he put this together. Alright, so we'll get that off of there. And then we've got our um, brush holders in here, which should pop out now. The other end of those threaded rods actually goes down. It holds, it holds the field coils in. Um, it goes all the way down to uh, down right to the um, brush holder to help pull those in. Well, that one just blew right out. Wow. Oh, but yeah, those look good. Um, yeah, it's like a big giant set screw on a threaded rod. So down in here, way down in there, there's the same setup where there's uh, uh, bronze bushing. Um, there's two oil wicks and a coiled up spring that uh, keeps uh, keeps everything in there. And they're a bit of a fight to get out. Just because it's so far down in there, we have a hard time getting to it. And we fight with these all the time. I haven't really found an easy way to get them out yet. Um, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to dig around with it too much here on video, I'll get it out later. Uh, but we've got the whole motor housing completely stripped down. And now we've got our turntable, you can see it's got quite a bit of rust on there. The bottom side just, is just missing paint, not really any rust, but... So we'll have to go through and uh, you know, blast all that off of there before we powder coat it. Um, it. It'll look a lot better. I mean, it doesn't look like it's like really pitted too much. It looks like maybe surface rust. All right, so now we got to take our base apart here. Let's and this has got a pin that it's easy to tell which way it goes. This side is much smaller than the other side. And usually, on the tabs right out. Of course the way this uh, mixer is, you know, everything being so tight on it, who knows. Yeah, it wasn't too
too bad. Alright, there's the pin. And this part here, uh, this comes off to powder coat it, but it's it's a bit of a pain to get it off. Um, you can see, you know, there's holes in the aluminum on here and on the stainless piece. They basically, they crimped them down into those holes and that's what holds this thing on. It does a really good job of holding it on. Uh, we, you know, we, we can't really pry against that because this is so much harder than the aluminum. Um, there's really no way to pry against those and we can't really drill them out because it does help to hold them on. Uh, so what we do, we basically heat this up and uh, get this good and hot, you know, and then we can tap it off because everything will swell up enough to where that'll clear it. And it does dig up the aluminum somewhat underneath where this covers, but there's nothing we can really do about that. Once it's back on, I mean, you don't notice it. Um, and same thing when we put it back on, we just heat it up and uh, tap it on. And then when it cools, it basically locks it back on there as hard as it ever was. So, so that's all I'm not going to do on camera either. Uh, but um, now you get an idea of what's, what's involved in that. Here we've got a screw that's a set screw for your height adjustment. Um, when you set your your beater height through the screw in the back, this screw right here you're supposed to tighten down onto it so that it doesn't come unadjusted. And this is the screw for your beater height. right here is your uh, is your slide assembly for your uh, for the bowl I'm um, to go from large to small bowls and it's a, actually it's like an infinite adjustment it doesn't have a, a detent anywhere you know at large and small bowls so you know you can you can move your mixers your, your beaters around anywhere in the bowl This whole assembly is held in with just one screw. It's got two washers on it. And this is the bearing. You know, this will get all cleaned up and then we'll re-oil that bearing and all this all this uh, chrome iron. This may have a little bit of pitting on it from rust, but it'll it'll still clean up really nice and, and look a lot better. basically it's just to keep tension on it so it doesn't flop around when it's on there. And all we've got left is these feet. And the feet on these are always pretty uh, pretty bad and pretty brittle. But we'll get new rubber feet on here. And it'll probably last a lot longer than the, the original feet too, because you know the older rubber is just, uh, uh, the, you know, I guess rubber technology, whatever was different. They, it, it always dried out and deteriorated a lot quicker than, uh, you know, than the new rubbers do. All right, so we have five old brittle feet off. Now this is ready for uh, sandblasting as well. All the parts we got here. Um, some of them we still got to take a couple parts off, like the bushing in there, uh, the stainless piece on here, um, and then on here we got to degrease the crap out of that and, and heat this up, take that off. But, uh, other than that, these pieces here are all ready for the. Uh, you know, as soon as they're degreased, everything will be ready for the blast and then, uh, ready for powder coat. And that right there is going to make a world of difference on this one. As we heard already in the beginning. It ran really, um, I mean, it wasn't didn't run perfect. You know, I mean, it, it'll run better when we're done. So they're gonna be clean and lubricated and, and all that. But uh, you know, it, I mean, it ran good enough where we know we're confident this thing's gonna run good when we're done with it. Uh, it has no no internal issues. Uh, I'll put it that way. Um, and, and the outside is just gonna look it's gonna look like brand new. And we do have decals to put on it. Um, you know, the original decals that came on here, we'll put those on there as well. Um, 
so that it looks, it, it'll look just like it did brand new, and uh, it'll run good too, and she'll be able to use this for a lot, lot, you know, a lot of years to come. Um, you know, it's, it's like I said, this one had a lot of sentimental value. It was a grandmother's, and, uh, you know, she'll be able to hand it down to her grandkids one day, you know, which is something really nice about these, because, honestly, you can't go buy anything these days that you can hand down to your grandkids. It just, it, it just won't be worth anything, you know, in a few years. They're just disposable, basically. Use it for a few years, and when it, when it dies, you throw it in the garbage and buy a new one. Um, that's one thing that, that I think everybody likes about these is because, you know, it a little serves the maintenance and they, they'll go for many more years and, uh, you know, they can stay stay in the family and they can become family heirlooms, you know, which is really cool. So, anyways, uh, you know, we're done with this video here. Um, we, you know, if, uh, I don't get these wire nuts, I want to reuse those too. Um, but anyways, we're done with this and if, um, you know, if we have, uh, if everything goes well, We'll be sandblasting and powder coating a, a lot of mixers tomorrow. Um, all the ones that we've taken apart lately, they're all ready to be sandblasted, and we've just been going on a spree taking them apart. Um, that way we can get we can get a bunch of them sandblasted and, and powder coated, you know, all on the same day, which would be nice. And that way it's just going through and just assembling one right after another. So if you guys want to see the updates on those or or uh, you know see the update on this one, um, be sure to subscribe so that you can get notified. You know, it, it's it's a lot easier than trying to search through YouTube. You know, to find a specific video or whatever, if you if you want to see the outcome of this or the other ones that we've done, um, if you subscribe, you'll be notified and you just click on your notification and, and you can see it. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and, and uh, you know, we'll get back to you on those. We, we, we try to get back to it pretty quick, you know, to answer any questions or reply to any comments. Um, if you like the video, also let us know uh, if we're doing something wrong, let us know that too. And, uh, you know, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again, guys.